It's 12.30, Monday afternoon, and I have one of those sleeps where I just did not want to get out of bed. I also haven't trimmed my beard yet, so you know. Literally, just made myself a coffee, just to came upstairs with it, and here we sit. So, I'm gonna drink a coffee, get a couple cigarettes into me, and we'll, we'll get on with this day. So without further ado, people, welcome to my vlog. So I get a message today from T-Man's Carts letting me know that uh, Makers just acquired something that I used to use, Makers Studios. Um, remember that old network back in the day, uh, Blip, or Blip TV or whatever you want to call it? Makers bought that. Does that mean that Makers is trying to get away from YouTube? I don't think so. I think what Makers is doing is they're being smart. They get their own video platform that's already populated with a bunch of players, make even more money, and then they can afford to do even crazier things. Now I haven't posted anything to, to uh, Blip in a long time, but uh, I think this is a good acquisition. I think more networks should consider doing the same thing. You know, maybe full screen should buy Vimeo, or friggin' uh, another one of the video platforms that are out there, or build their own. Who knows? Uh, the problem with YouTube is, is lately they've been making so many changes and pissing off so many people that people have just decided to give up on the whole friggin' thing. Which, you know, happens from time to time. People can only take so much change, and when there's too much change, people just want to walk away from it and say, frig it all. You know, I, I just deal with change because, well, that's my job. I'm a computer technician, and I deal with change. So, it's just the way she goes, right? I don't see myself anytime, anytime soon making any more blip TV videos. I'm gonna stick with YouTube until it shits the bed and then go from there. But uh, kind of an interesting topic, like when I found out that they bought blip. Kind of a kind of an interesting investment. We'll have to see how that goes. The blip is, it's not as chiseled as YouTube, where you set up an account, you can subscribe to people, receive the videos in your feed. Mind you makers now could sit there and fix that and make it more chiseled and make it more like YouTube, make it more welcoming to people who just want to watch videos. But right now, it's kind of more of a place where you put your videos, but you embed them on your personal website. That's usually what Blip is, is good for. I know uh, Smosh does that. They'll put bloopers and outtakes up on Blip and then put them on their website and tell people to go to their website to watch the, the bloopers, outtakes, and, and, and stuff like that, extra stuff. I guess works out pretty damn good, you know, because then they're, they're freaking getting money from the YouTubes and money from the Blips. So that, that works out pretty good if you know you're doing YouTube as a career. The best way to best way to span everything across a bunch of networks is to uh, use multiple platforms and uh, hopefully your website's kicking ass. Now if I actually had a website and it was kicking ass, I'd probably do the same thing, but I don't, so it's you know, I don't bother. I just make YouTube videos. Frig it. I need another coffee, cause I don't feel caffeinated. I want another coffee, so I'm gonna go make one Skeetle douche. So it really seems like uh, this year is gonna be the year of the uh, smartwatches. Probably thinking, what the hell are you talking about, Adam? Well, Samsung's got theirs ready to roll out in a couple months, probably next month, closer to Christmas. And uh, friggin' um, Apple's talking about making a smartwatch. They might announce it tomorrow when they announce the new iPhone lineup. Yeah, they're making a new iPhone lineup tomorrow in case y'all didn't catch that, which when you guys watch it will be today. So they're going to be announcing a bunch of new stuff for Apple. Maybe they'll refresh the iPod Touch too, I don't know. But uh, they got a bunch of announcements coming out and we'll have to see what they come up with. But Samsung's got their smartwatch ready to roll and uh, friggin' of all companies to make a smartwatch, I never expected this. Nissan, the car company, is making a smartwatch that will link you to your car and will report your speeds and your distance traveled, and your telemetry, and all that shit, your engine temperatures, everything. Everything will get reported to this watch, including your own heart rate. So if you're doing something exhilarating, like racing around a track, and your heart's racing, well, the watch will know. That's kind of a waste of technology, if you ask me, you know? Uh, you're sitting in the cockpit of the car, right in front of you is the speedometer, the tack, all your stupid lights for like low oil and all that, low fuel and that, you really don't need a watch on your wrist to distract you from driving so that you're like <laughs> you know and you hit a freaking car because you're too busy looking at your watch to see how fast you're going rather than you know looking straight ahead and going oh we're doing this speed cool you know that's kind of a stupid thing but it'd be neat if that watch also supports the ability to do other things like oh I don't know like a fob for your car you know you get close to the car and the car unlocks because the watch tells it to. Or 
you know, somebody's breaking into your car, the watch sets off an alarm. I, however, am one of those individuals who prefers the old fashioned way to unlock your door with a key in the side cylinder, turn and go. And then you put the key in the ignition and you start it. Now, my friend bought one of those Nissan Cubes. And what you get with it is you don't really get a key. You get a key to unlock the door if something goes wrong. But to start the car, you just have to have this little fob on you. And when you walk up to the door, it automatically unlocks. And then you get in the car and you press the start button and it starts the car. My problem with that is if that fob ever dies, then you're dicked. How the hell are you going to start your car? How the hell are you going to get into your car? We can get into it, but you're basically screwed. Unless the uh, car has some form of override that can get around the bullshit then right on but if it doesn't then you're frigged you know so uh, I don't know what, what do you guys think about the this new technology with the fobs for cars to start them and stuff or even better yet the Nissan wristwatch to tell you how you're doing when you're driving I personally think that that technology is a waste but you be the judge in the comments below oh uh, it's currently a quarter after three I should go rip up a lunch I gotta go out to my car and get my lunch box because it's in the car still for sakes you know I've been on vacation didn't really give a shit but uh, that fun time is over speaking of not giving a shit I gotta rock a piss so like I was saying about uh, the whole makers and blip thing I just ch chatted with JP over at red light to see if he knew anything about it and he had no clue he didn't even know what blip TV was so I explained to him basically what it is and uh, now he's like eagerly trying to get a hold of Grant from Maker Studios to find out uh, WTF BBQ is going on. Uh, anybody wants to read up on that, I posted a link to the article on my Facebook fan page. So you, by all means, go check that out and uh, get yourself a little informed. Right now for me, let's just check to see if I have mail. I so happen to have a bunch of mail. So I'm gonna crack open my door, grab my lunchbox, and we'll go back in the house. Alrighty, well, got my lunch all made, so we're good to go. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this grand return to work. <laughs> Freak sakes. Been off for like 10 days going back, it's gonna be hell. Also, I got 10 days worth of emails I gotta filter through and, you know, figure out and get everything done. And that whole no more filming at work thing also throws a monkey wrench into plans. It's just the way she goes. Oh ah, well, let's uh, pitter patter and have at her. And oh, I gotta grab my laptop. I don't have that at work. That's here. I need that. So let's grab her shit and head off to work. Let's do this. Oh, back to work. First day back after 10 days off. Friggin' dicked. Hoping the camera stays a little bit more stable this time around, but I don't know if it will. Uh, I tightened up both the lugs on the uh, camera mount, see if that would solve the problem. But I have a feeling that it's just not going to work. It's not going to cut it. This camera is too heavy, people. Way too heavy. So, ow wells. Ow wells. Haven't even checked my phone today to see if anybody texted me. Just freaking got up and started start driving some coffees into my throat. And then now I'm on to work. So, yeah. Go on Facebook, go on YouTube, see what's going on. That's a cute little escapade. <laughs> I like that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I did. Watch Bruce's video there. Bruce is talking about how I need to practice welding, and it's true. Welding is an art. And with any art form, the more you practice, the better you get. So, like you said, I need to get me some scrap metal and just start friggin' rip snotting it together. And one of the videos I watched on welding, buddy said, just go out and get a piece of steel cut it all up and then weld it all back together and then cut it up again weld it all back together again and you know try different angles and different things and figure it out so you stay there fucker okay jesus so yeah so that's all you got to do is just freaking have at her and take your time and practice and uh, you'll, you'll get there and, well that much i do know it's just not every day that i use my welder you know, it's some people out there, they can't go a day without touching a welder, and I'm one of those guys who can go a couple months without needing to use it. But at least if shit breaks on the Dynamark, at least I have a way to mend it. You know, as long as it's not something too critical that breaks. I don't see myself building a snow plow for it anytime soon, because uh, I still don't have the foggiest on how to build that. Watched a couple videos of people doing it. And it looks like uh, a lot of people just go and get an old used uh, water heater, you know, cut it up and use a chunk of that for the plow blade. And then some like square tubing or angle iron or whatever they can get their mitts on for, for the, uh, the framing and all that shit. So that doesn't look too bad, but yeah, I'm not that kind of an engineer. 
A lot of people are asking me if I fixed that Acer computer yet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that computer is probably completely frigged over. Uh, they said they had it on all summer and while school was out for summer, so there's no reason to be at the office. Just nobody ever uses that computer unless they need to print something off or they need a spare computer, so it just kind of just sits there idling. They had it on all summer and apparently there's a bunch of power surges in the building. That's why they ended up buying a bunch of new laptops, because they want to switch to a more mobile laptop. And for public storage, they, they're going to use a SkyDrive from Microsoft. So, yep a dip so yeah, but that computer, that, that, that Acer, that was just like a, a separate computer to use if, you know, shit hit the fan on one of the rigs and they had to send it out to get fixed, they had that backup computer to use, but she's an old jalopy running Windows XP, slower than frig, you know, all that noise. Ugh, going back to work. Wonder if we found anything new about the business, if it's uh, being shut down or what, whatnot. Oh yeah, next Saturday I got the water dick showing up, forgot about him. I was saying, what water dick? Well, I'm getting a uh, water meter installed in the house, mandatory by the city of North Bay, so they can monitor how much water I'm bringing in and then build me accordingly. This means for certain people who uh, installed the second, like right now, what we're built on right now is depends on how many items we have in the house that consume water. So they charge you X amount of dollars per device that consumes water. Oh yeah. Everybody's running. I don't see no zombies. I guess we're go we're okay. But um, yeah, so what they do is like so for every device you have in your house that can produce water or you know open a valve and spill water, they charge you a flat rate. So like a toilet is like twenty bucks, and a shower head is like thirteen dollars, a sink is ten bucks. So. I have two sinks, one shower, one toilet, uh, laundry hookup, and the uh, friggin' garden hose outside that doesn't work. So their grand total for me is 68 bucks a month. Now do I use $68 worth of water? No, but I know some people who have installed bathrooms in their house and never got a permit for it. So what ended up happening was uh, they didn't, they're not getting billed on the water meter. They're not getting billed for these new toilets and stuff they installed. And this happens everywhere, like there's tons of places that people have installed a bathroom in a, in a house and never told anybody and they're getting away with it scot-free for now. But the moment that water meter comes into play, well it doesn't matter how many toilets you have in your house, they're going to charge you every time you flush that damn thing and refill the tank. So, you know, maybe I'll consider twice before I give, give somebody an upper decker. But, uh, yeah, yeah pretty uh, pretty dicked so for me at my lower like I was chatting with Bruce from head office and he said his daughter had it installed and their water bill went down because they don't use as much water so I guess we'll have to see what happens when I get mine installed and what I don't like is now I know like at the end of the month they take 68 bucks out for water I know they do that so I always have that money put aside I know that my gas bill is 80 bucks a month I know that my hydro bill is 110 a month so I always make sure to have 190 put aside to cover the utilities plus $68. So usually I have about 260 bucks put into the bill account and that's what it cost me to run my house for the month with heat, hydro and uh, the water bill. But now it's going to be a variable water bill, it's going to vary month to month unless they do an equal billing plan. So it's like one month it could be 60 bucks, the next month it could be 40 bucks, the month after that it could be 180 bucks. You know, that's why like for, for dad it's going to be a pain in the ass because he's got that underground sprinkler system and if he runs that it's just going to friggin chew away at the meter and he's going to get a massive bill. Like I never water my lawn, look you can tell, like my lawn's a piece of shit right now because I don't maintain it, like I don't water it and I don't weed it, I don't give a shit about it, you know, it's lucky it gets cut. So, but if I were to start watering my lawn, putting sprinklers onto it and all that nonsense, well yeah, then it would, uh, my water bill would be ridiculous, you know, but luckily I'm not like my neighbors and I don't care about having a perfectly green friggin' blade only lawn. Because if I did care about that, I'd be broke. Broke as a joke on coke, let me tell ya. So, oh well, not a big deal. Uh, do I remember how to log into my phone and my computer? Not 
start early. Holy shit, this light's never red. Okay, there we go. Yeah, back to friggin' work, eh? Don't you hate that after a vacation? You're all, well, I'm all relaxed and rested and things. It's just, you go back to work and all it takes is a couple shifts and you're right stressed out again. So I wonder how quick the water dick's gonna be this weekend when he comes over and installs that meter. Hopefully he's not festering there for a while because I hate that. And very soon it's gonna be time to park this thing. Park it for the winter and drive the G6. Son of a bitch, you know? But next spring I'll be able to take this bad boy back out and get some good fuel mileage and stuff. It's pretty bad that I say that about this juicy V8. Get a good fuel mileage, that's pretty dick. But uh, it's the way she goes, people. It's the way she pregnant goes. Oh, it seems a lot busier here this time around. Alrighty. Let's go find a place to stab this thing, stab it in there, and go inside and do some hard earned work so we can earn a hard earned paycheck. Alrighty, I'll talk to you guys at midnight when I get out of here. Until then, peace the frig out. Alright guys, it's friggin' midnight. Time to get the hell out of here. First shift done, four more to go, and the weekend's here. Right on. So let's jump in the car and head her home and uh, friggin' give her. And magically like that, we are home. One down, four to go. Friggin' rights! So I'm just gonna let uh, Scruffy Fluffy Puppy Wuppy out. Cause he's been cooped up in the house for eight and a half hours. Go potty. So we'll let him out for a quick potty, and uh, tonight I'm going to tackle that computer and see if there's anything I can do to save it. I'm going to pop the side off of it, reseat all the hardware. Sometimes that's the problem, is that the hardware just becomes unseated. Where did he go? Is he going to rock shit? Oh no, he's back. Here you go. So, uh, yup, yup, yup. So I get a text from uh, Jules while I'm at work, eh? And she's like, oh, I'm at the Emerge again. And I'm like, oh, frig sakes, uh, you have another allergic reaction. She's like, nope. Emily broke her arm or sprained it. I was like, what? How the hell did that happen? Why am I asking that? Well, you know, kids are rough on each other and stuff, and, you know, things happen. But, uh, no, apparently, uh, yesterday while I was over there, one of one of Jules's friends was there, and she's uh, she trains over at that. Um, there's a place here in town. It's a gym, uh, like a, a gym place for kids, basically to teach gymnastics. And she trains there. And uh, Jules's uh, second oldest daughter was doing like handstands and stuff like that. So she basically showed them how to do a proper handstand and proper cartwheels. You know, trying to get their technique down and stuff. And uh, I guess today at school, let's give the dog some more liquid courage. There he goes. Um, I guess today at school, she decided to show her friends what she can do, and she frigged up the maneuver and ended up landing on her arm or something. I don't know exactly what happened, but she was doing gymnastics and she uh, hurt her arm. So Jules brought her to the eMERGE and um, doctor looked it over and said, yup, she's broken, time to cast her up. So threw a cast onto her and you know, now she's, she's home and she's got a great big freaking, well on her left arm, great big plaster cast. So it was funny because the picture that Jules sent me, she's like in the friggin' uh, doctor's, uh, in the hospital there, like in, in one of the rooms, waiting for the doctor to come and see her. And uh, you know, she's holding her arm and stuff, but she's still like smiling for the camera. I swear, that kid's hilarious. You get a camera in front of her, she cannot, she cannot smile. She has to smile. Even if she's in complete and total pain, she will force out a smile. It's friggin' hilarious. But yeah, she's got a cast on now. Good thing swimming season's over, eh? Because that would suck to break your arm in the beginning of the summer, not being able to go swimming or anything. Because that happened to her, her youngest daughter, when her youngest daughter, well, you guys remember that vlog. We had to go to the hospital to meet up with uh, Jules' sister, because Jules' sister had uh, her youngest daughter for the week, and she fell and cut her leg open, got like 15 stitches and stuff. So, and she wasn't allowed to, uh, basically, she was allowed to shower, but it had to be like wrap a bag around the knee because it wasn't allowed to get wet. And she couldn't bend her legs, so she had to like keep a tensor bandage on all the time to keep it straight. She was peg legging around and couldn't go swimming, couldn't play on the water slide, couldn't do anything that involved getting wet. So that really sucked, and that happened at the beginning of the summer. Well, I would say it happened probably around July sometime. But yeah, that would really suck. Like, break your arm in the beginning of summer and you can't do anything outside, you know? You gotta be careful and stuff. Can't get the cast wet, she'll fall apart. So, yeah. 
I don't know, that's the way she goes, I guess. But uh, that's one thing I've never done, is I've never broken a bone yet. Yet. Just as I say that, and we're getting starting to get into romper mowing, uh, mower romping, eh? So, oh well. Anyway, people, I'm gonna make something quick to eat, because all I ate today was uh, a sandwich, some carrots, and some cucumber. And I'm friggin' starved, so I don't know what I'm gonna make. Almost tempted to go out to the garage and barbecue the shit out of something. Really tempted to. But I should make it something quick and dirty that I can just quickly drive into my face and then uh, get on that computer work because I want to get that done and then that way there I can move on to bigger and better things. So, yeah. You know what? I should cook that lasagna. Remember that lasagna I made a while back and I screwed up by using the convectional oven and it ended up being all blacker than frig? Well, I think I might make the other one and that way there I can bring some of my lunch tomorrow. That'd be awesome. Oh, I had to poop. I thought about that lasagna. I forgot it takes two hours to make, so I'm going to skip on that. But Oreo really wants some bacon. I'm going to show you something with dorps, hopefully. Check this out. I don't even have to go into the bag. I just sent him in after it. Let him go. He's like, he was so in there. Did you see that? He was so in there. There's not much left in that thing. He just like fires his head right in there and gets it. I didn't even look, but he probably grabbed like five of the friggin' dog. Ooh, maybe I'll make some hamburger helper. Because apparently it makes a great meal. Hamburger helper makes a great meal. Skeet a little dee, skeet a little dow. Okay, so I got some medium ground beef here. I'm just going to uh, defrost it in the microwave. And then uh, we're going to make, what brand is this one? Beef Ramanoff. Yeah, that'll be good. Oh, freak yeah, browning up some beef. Yeah, that's how we roll. And I've also started doing my dishes, so i got a lot to do. But I'm going to brown up this beef and then get this friggin' shit rolling. Should be good. So while I wait for that beef to get a little browner, I'm going to basically talk a little something about this channel. I mentioned in the past that I was like, uh, maybe I'll make another channel and put some videos up on it and stuff and like make another tech channel and things and honestly, I don't, I don't feel like making another channel. I'm just going to do everything on this channel. I can guarantee you one thing, there will always be at least one video a day, unless I fall asleep during rendering and forget to upload it. It'll be there just a little later. But the vlog will normally always air, air at 9 o'clock in the morning, except for vlog, fi uh, vlog 1000, which might take a little bit longer to upload. So that might air at like, you know, 5 in the afternoon or something. But, um, yeah, we're going to try and go for as long as possible for vlog 1000. Hey, we did two hours on vlog 500. Maybe we can do five hours on vlog 1000. I don't know. But every time I do that, I keep upping the bar, and then vlog friggin' 2500, I'll have to go for like a, uh, a full 24 hours or something. Uh, I didn't say that. But, um, basically, there will always be one video a day. Always be the vlog at 9 a.m. Any extra videos that I make will go up at either 3 p.m., 5 p.m., or 9 p.m., depending on, you know, whatever reason. Um, I like making videos, you know. The vlogs are fine and all, but I don't like including certain things like important things like tutorials in a vlog because people don't want to have to go to a video to look up something you know on like for instance if I do a Magic's Movie Edit Pro tutorial or a Sony Vegas tutorial or even an unboxing people want to see what comes with like a keyboard or a computer they don't want to have to watch a whole 30 minute vlog to get that out they'd rather just watch the unboxing so the Northern Tech will be aired on this channel you know um, today I uploaded that video of the farting and burping me just dicking around with the mixing you've probably seen other videos that were done better like that there's people out there who do those all the time they basically um, I gotta buy some new fucking fries Frying pans. These frying pans are shit. They're all beveled and they're just this flat top stove is a pile of junk. But um, you've probably seen videos out there like that before where it's uh, Buddy's like doing a cappella and he's got like the four screens or he's playing like the guitar and the synthesizer and the drums and he's singing and whatever and like I've seen them before, I've always wanted to do one. T-Man did one with like banging a ratchet and stuff and it was pretty cool and I figured, eh, I'll try it with farting and burping. So it didn't take me long to make that, obviously you can tell because it wasn't really pro. But uh, I've always wanted to try that, so I finally did. I threw it up there. People think I'm an idiot, some people think it's friggin' hilarious. Whatever, man. All the power to you. I had a blast doing it and that's all that matters to me. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start uploading like stuff I wanted to hear. i got a couple unboxing videos and how-to videos that I want to do. And I was going to put them on a separate channel, but you know what? Frig it. They're going to go on here. So, like I say, you see the video, you don't want to watch it, don't click on it. If you do want to watch it, give her a watch. But every day at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the vlog will be live. Anyway, people, 
I better get cooking on this. Yay, I have a semi-clean counter again. I just got some cutlery to clean, but uh, that water was pretty putrid. So I'll clean that up myself by hand. Not a big deal. Well, I was washing dishes by hand anyway, but what I mean is I'll use my spongy thing and clean those. And uh, wait for these to dry and put them away. But right now, dinner is served. So I'm gonna go ahead and make myself a bowl of this shit and then go and eat it and then get working on that freaking computer. Hopefully to be able to return it tomorrow. If I can get it working, well, regardless, if I don't get it working, I'm returning it. If I get it working, I'm returning it. So let's get this shite into a bowl and hammer down. Alrighty, well, I've gone ahead and cracked open the computer to take a look inside. I've already reseated the RAM and made sure that this hard drive was all hooked up and things. That's something weird I've never seen on a hard drive before. It's got both the SATA connector and it's got a Molex connector for the old style. That's different. Sure is dirty in here. I don't even know how big that hard drive is. I honestly don't care. As long as, it, as long as I can get the sun bitch to fire. So it's got the same friggin' uh, setup as my old Acer does. The FSP group friggin' shitty ass power supply. Um, maybe this will help you see it better. 250 watt, nothing fancy. Couldn't really run anything in here. Basically for what they're using it for, it's perfect. Other than that, be shit. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up. I got my monitor and everything set up back there on the other desk. I'm gonna hook it up over there and see if I can get her to fire. And then I'll we'll go from there. Alrighty, well this computer's really fried. Um, it's on right now. It's reporting no video signal. I don't think the hard drive activity light's going off or anything, but I'm gonna go ahead and kill it. I'll show you guys what it does. Okay, it's off now. All right, let's kick her over. And this is what it does. It'll boot up, display the Acer screen, and then it says delete, doesn't work, F12 doesn't work. Goes to this screen and says no video signal, which it will not focus on, but no video signal. So obviously, the motherboard is either fried, the onboard video is fried, something's fried. So, if I can find the ATI card, that uh, 6450 I got with my new Dell, I'm going to stab that in there and see if she'll fire. And now we find ourselves in the garage, because I could have sworn I heard Rex say something about a video card out here. Um, oh frig, he's probably talking about this thing. This won't work. This is my old 8800, my old 8800 GTX. It's got a... I think it's got a gig of memory on it at the time that was friggin awesome but I could have sworn I found the video card out here and said I wanted to bring it in the house if I did I have no idea where the frig it was god do I have a pack of cigarettes out here no just an empty bag yeah can't be out here well I don't have the foggiest where the frig I put that 6400 card or yeah 6450 not the foggiest. I thought for sure I had it out here. I didn't stuff it in this box by accident, did I? No. It's just junk in there. I have no idea where the hell I put that card. I'm going to think this one through. Well, actually, I guess what I could do for a test is I have my 8600 GT upstairs. Not a big card. It's cooled uh, passively, not actively. It's not really exactly the awesomest card out there, but I guess I could test with that. And if that does work, then... Uh, all that I'll have to tell them is you guys need to buy a video card and go from there. So, go pick up a video card at like Staples or Future Shop or just like a little friggin' NVIDIA 260 or not even 260, like a 210. Wouldn't even have to be powerful. Just something to throw video up to a friggin' old CRT display. Yeah, that's right people, this thing's hooked up to a dirty old Dell CRT. Kinda like that one there. So, worst case in Ontario, that's what I'll do. I just, you know, if, it was, if I had the 6450, I would've just said, here, take it. You know, charge them like 20, 30 bucks extra for the card and be like, there, you're done. Go do. Also, while I'm out here, I'm going to tell you guys why the clutch slips. Basically, this pedal, you see that metal thing on it? Well. Right there, that engages the parking brake. When you release it with your foot, watch what happens. Look. It gets caught. I didn't realize that was happening. It gets caught, it gets hung up, so then you release it, and then you come over with your foot, and you give her a shimmy kick, and then she comes all the way back. That's why this damn thing's been slipping belts. So, one of these days, I'm going to get my drill, I'm going to drill that freaking thing right out, and get rid of that stupid parking brake once and for all, because uh, she's dicked. And that will solve my issue with the slippery belt. Skeetily douche. Well, friggin' it's pissing rain out. I'm gonna go back in the house and uh, try the 8600 in it. See what happens. Let's go. Hopefully I don't blow the power supply. Nah. 
Alrighty, so I got my video card in there, my 8600, and it actually gets a little further. If you tell it to go into Windows, actually we'll use the last note configuration that most recently worked, it basically will do nothing. Yep. The motherboard's fucking done. Like, it's, it's, it's cooked. It's gotta be. Friggin' dusty in here. It's gotta be dust. If I turn off my uh, light bulb, you probably won't see any orbs anymore, but it's pretty dirty, pretty dusty in this room. So, this Acer's toast. I don't know what to tell them. I can get the shit off the hard drive, but I don't know what they want to keep. But this rig is done. So even with the new video card, that computer's toast. Now, some of you are saying, oh, just replace the motherboard and the processor and the RAM and everything and get it back up and running. Okay, first off, that computer, that thing is from 2007. It's a Pentium single core 1.8 gigahertz piece of shit. I looked up the specs came stock with one gig of RAM. And I do believe it is DDR. I could be wrong. No, it is DDR. You know, 250 watt power supply. If you were to actually have to put a new board chip and RAM in there, even if you went with something cheap, like like a freaking Pentium B960 or a, uh, uh, a freaking, what else is cheap? Uh, AMD E series, you know, an E1500. The board, you're gonna pay about 50 bucks. The chip, you're gonna pay about 75 to 100 dollars. The RAM, you're gonna pay about 50 to 75 dollars for RAM. Honestly, they're better off just to buy another cheap Acer computer. I could take the hard drive out of that one, stab it in the other one, and we can get the data off of it. So um, I might make that recommendation to them to get another computer and we'll just slave this drive so that we can get all the documents off of it. And if they don't want to do that, if they just want to scrap this one here and not bother with another computer, well, I can always hook this up to one of my external cases and just shovel the data right onto, uh, onto another computer or onto a portable hard drive or some shit, whatever they want to do. So, but anyway people, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm calling her quits, I'm going to bed, because I am done. So if you liked today's video, hit that like button, any questions, comments, concerns, and down below they go. And until next time people, keep on vlogging!